Good morning, saints, on this beautiful fall morning. And we thank God for all of us who are in attendance and those who will be coming. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, we are so grateful for this day, dear God. Thank you how you have blessed us this past week. And Father, we uh, we are in the house of prayer, and we we call on you right now. We want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you have done for us all this week, and thank you for waking us up this morning and blessing <clears throat> us to be here. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Him dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you would just that we would be guided by the Spirit and that we would get into your word and, and Father, that we would learn from it and apply it in our lives. We look forward to what you're going to say to us today in your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, saints. We are going to start a new unit of study beginning today and it is entitled confident in the face of hard questions we uh hopefully most of us know what we believe and why we believe it but this series of lessons the next six lessons is going to help reinforce that because unfortunately there are a lot of christians that don't know what they believe or why they believe it and that's important to understand why you believe it and it's it's found in the word of god and we live in a day and time when people want to believe a lot of things. Do you know that uh, a third of Christians, and I guess it depends on the age group, uh, because it's greater than that with younger people, they do not believe in absolute truth. They, they do not believe in that. So these series of lessons are to help us and, going to, and some questions that we may encounter with people that are unbelievers. There was a situation, not more than a situation, we were blessed, Ivy and I, to witness to someone this year and gave them the plan of salvation. And they said, hey, I, I'm just not ready yet. I, I, it's, uh, I'm I I don't know I don't know as it as it applies to me and they didn't know how to apply that the truth of God's word to them they were afraid that they were not good enough uh, to say that yes I want to be a Christian they had some misunderstandings about what it took to be a Christian. Now, we went through the plan of salvation and had a pretty lengthy conversation we were blessed to have with this individual. And finally, this person came to the point where they understood that it's not based on them and their goodness. And that uh, they could accept Christ. Now, I... We, we prayed with them and led them. I mean, they, they prayed the, the prayer of salvation, led them in that. And I let them know that it is not just saying a few words. Amen. It, it, and, 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 and what I mean by that is that it is, and we'll get into it into this le in this lesson, it's a heart change. It's a heart condition as well. And if you're not sincere, uh, if, but it, you're not going to be perfect once it's done. Uh, 
what I explained to the person, there's a difference between salvation and sanctification. Because sanctification is a process that you're going to go through for the remainder of your life once you accept Christ, because all of us need to grow in uh, some areas. And I, all of us, 100%. So uh, once this person came to know that, and they said that they felt free, they felt a burden was lifted from their life, and they prayed the prayer of salvation, they accepted Christ in, into their life, and to my knowledge, to this day, uh, is, is quite happy about that, because what they say, they know where they're going. And uh, that while, while that is true, uh, there's a process that they, they need to work on and, and need to be more, more involved in church and what have you in order to grow. Well, this lesson today is a very familiar lesson to us. I say the, the lesson, this, this passage of scripture, although the scripture that we're most familiar with, when I say John uh, 3, you say the, immediately the scripture that comes to your mind is John 3, 16. Well, as the, the verses after that are the ones that we're going to be studying today and are important to for our understanding uh, because Jesus said those words is also. So we're going to be looking at John 3, verses 19 through 21, John 8, verses 31 through 36. And the question that's asked today is, does it really matter which truth I believe? Yes, sir, it does. Because the point of this lesson is knowing the truth of Christ is the only way we can experience freedom. Knowing the truth of Christ is the only way that that's going to happen. Uh, so let's, uh, uh, let's, let's get into our study today. And I'm going to ask Maury if he would, if he would read uh, our printed text for today. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love the darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hated the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be may manifest that they are wrought in God. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abided not in the house of forever, but the Son abideth ever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. In, in your Sunday school literature that you have, and I don't know if you were familiar with this word before you read it, uh, postmodernism. And I'm going to uh, read what it says. It says, postmodernism says that we can each make up our own version of what is true. That is so true in our day and time, saints. This postmodern way of thinking dominates so many institutions of modern society. I once had a social media conversation with a self-professed postmodernist who believe everyone gets to make up their own truth. 
At the very beginning of our online conversation, the postmodernists immediately began to attack my Christian beliefs. He wrote, you people are ridiculous. God is a primitive Bronze Age belief. He doesn't cause thunder and he didn't create the universe. I'm hedon hedonist, in other words, he loves pleasure because humans are real and we create truth and morality, not God. The Bible is complete garbage. It is horribly written narrative with equally disastrous morality thrown into it. That's why I have no problem tossing one to the fire where it belongs. Wow. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people may believe like that. Amen. Sad day. Tough day that we live in. <clears throat> and so there's a challenge to the things that we believe as Christians. And the reason that these lessons were written is if somebody challenged you in that way, what would you say to them as to why you believe what you believe? And so we are going to be in a series of lessons where we'll talk about that beginning with this first one on, does it really matter which truth I believe? And there's uh, other wonderful lessons over the, the next six weeks beginning today that I would challenge us and, and will help us as believers because all of us confront situations like that, don't we? I'm sure there are people that have said to you that, I, that they cannot believe the Bible because they believe it's trash. Or they'll say that some uh, one particular race wrote it, and so it doesn't apply uh, to me because of the color of my skin. There are all kind of outrageous things that people say. Uh, or they have a different version of the Bible. They knock on your door, and they're, 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 they're telling you different versions of the Word of God. So it's important for us to understand. And one thing that's important for us as believers, saints, <clears throat> is there are certain truths that we cannot compromise on. We can't compromise. We can't compromise on Jesus is the only way to be saved. Amen. We can't do that. Uh, we have, and, and there are other things that we're going to be talking about over the next several weeks. Uh, and so we, we turn first to uh, John 3. And when we look at John 3, uh, you remember the story. In fact, I used to sing about it <clears throat> all the time it was, a, it was a song i could i couldn't remember the last verse that uh miss ross taught our choir and she had me lead it and it was hush somebody's what calling my name hush somebody's calling my name <clears throat> and the first verse that i can recall that i was saying is that uh christ said nicodemus you must be born again. We're talking about the background right now. You must be born again. Uh, uh, and then Nicodemus, the, the second verse was, how can a man be born when he's old? Was, was the second verse. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> uh, and, and, then, and then Jesus responded, and, and, and this is the way the song was written, just believe, repent, and be baptized. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. But he also went on to talk about some other things. But before I leave, uh, before I leave Nicodemus, remember how Nicodemus came to Jesus? He came to Jesus by night, is what the word of God says. Amen. Uh, you know, we're going to be we're going to be studying this week at, at Bethlehem about living by the book. And one of the things that we need to do if, if we're going to uh, get stronger in the word, it's not just me standing up here teaching, but you ought to be able to tell the story just like I'm telling the story to you. Amen. You, you, you ought to know the story. 
you 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 ought you ought to be able to tell it. You uh, and and what what events that took place, um, especially uh, like the text that we're talking about today, <clears throat> with in John three and also in John eight when we when we get to that and that 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 believe me, saints, that helps your understanding of the scripture when you're able to tell the story. Because if you can't tell the story, you need to read it again. <laughs> you need to. You need to uh, rehearse it. And that's why I ask you questions from time to time, because I want you, it's not enough for you to just hear me tell the story. You need to be able to tell the story. And I want you uh, to, to do that. Uh, but Nicodemus, he came to Jesus by night. And, and the reason I want to bring that up is because every one of us came to Jesus by night. There was a darkness that was in my life. How about you? Before you came to Jesus, there was a darkness in my life. Yes, I, I, I was a child, but I recognized that there was something that was missing in my, my life and that I needed Jesus in my life. And the fact is, I was in darkness. All of us are in darkness. And, and Jesus uh, says of himself, and John, John talks often in the book of John about uh, light. And he contrasts, and, and, and he says that Jesus is that light. He's, he's that light that has uh, uh, come into the world, saints. And uh, so Nicodemus had to, he came by darkness to, so that he could talk to the light. And, and when we see the light, the light of Christ, when the gospel is presented to us, it is the light of Christ that draws us, uh, that attracts us. Have y'all ever been someplace where it was so dark that you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face? Uh, I, I had, uh, there was somebody that came here from California <laughs> well, <laughs> one year and they said, boy, don't y'all have lights around here? It sure is dark around here. <laughs> because they're used to the city lights and, and how, uh, and, and a light on every corner and what have you. And, and But yes, we can, we can be in places where it is so dark that we can't even see our hand in front of our face. But once the light is turned on, amen, we, we can see. And, and that's what Jesus was for Nicodemus, that's what he is for us. And, and the, another reason I bring that up to us is that once you see the light, you don't turn around and go back toward the darkness, do you? Amen. Amen. You go toward that light. And, and as you come closer and closer to that light, that light is going to get brighter and brighter because all of us are in a cave. Uh, and, and there's darkness in our life, but Jesus is that light. Well, he comes to Nicodemus, and and so uh, let's look again at 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 uh, verse 19, uh, because Nicodemus, the, the other things that he said to him is that there are uh, not everybody accepts the light, right? And he he connects, when you see the word and, it's a connection word. And it's connected to the previous verse that he talked about in verse 17. Because there are people that that they, uh, they have made the decision to remain in darkness. They make that decision to remain in darkness. And so what Jesus is saying when he gets to, when we get to verse 19, he's saying those people are condemned already. Amen. They are in, uh, they are under condemnation. Uh, and, and, and then he goes on to explain why they are in condemnation. So it's a choice. God does not send anybody to hell. You are under condemnation until you reach the point where you said, hey, I need Jesus <laughs> in my life. 
I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say I need Buddha, amen, or some other religion that's out there. I need Jesus in my life, and he's the only way for me to be saved. And, and that's what he's explaining to Nicodemus. That uh, and and that until you see that light, and and he goes on to tell him that he is that light, and he didn't hide it. He tells others, and we'll talk about that when we get to chapter eight, uh, because he says the light has come into the world. And when he's talking about the light, he's not just talking about external light. He's talking about himself. That he is that light. Now let's talk about that for a, a moment. Uh, because Jesus uh, is that spiritual light. He is a light, and, and what this light does, it penetrates. All of you who are saved know what I'm talking about. It penetrated your heart one day. So it's not just an external light, like these lights that are in this room. When I came, when I came in this in the sanctuary, in in in, in uh, place of worship this morning, I had to turn on the lights because it was dark in here. That's external light, but the light that Jesus is talking about is a light that will penetrate your heart. Amen. Now it's up it's up to me to make a decision. Am I going to accept Him? Am I going to accept Christ? Because He said this light came into the world. But check this out. Now, why didn't everybody accept this light? Because they love what? They love the darkness. They love they love the scene. Listen, when I was when I was a teenager, uh, one of the things that was popular for us was and 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 some of the boys would talk about it. Now, I, I never did get into this. When night came, they gonna go creeping. Creep, 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 creep. Y'all remember that? Come on now. <laughs> yeah, they gonna go creeping. And and and, it, and and why why do people wait till it's night? Yeah, amen. Can't see. Yeah, they feel like they can sneak around. Hey, the the fact the fact of the matter is when it because Jesus is the light. He sees us everywhere we go, whatever we do. But but men love darkness, and they, uh, I, I I don't know the statistics on it, but when most crimes are committed, it's going to be at night. Why? So people can't see them. When roaches come out, <laughs> they want to come out in the night. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Um, and because they don't, they don't, and when they see the light, they run. We live in a post-Christian world today. And when you stand up for what is right and what God's word says, you will not be popular with everybody. That's why uh, in our introduction and what that man wrote to the writer of this lesson uh, was so critical of Christians and, 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 and just talked about how ridiculous that we are as a people. That's the way they look at us because they think I, what we what we believe is antiquated, and and no longer applies to the world that we live in today. Uh, why? Because their deeds are evil. Is what the Bible says. It's what Jesus said to Nicodemus. They want to do evil. They're caught up in this evil. They don't want to change. Amen. So that's why it's it's more than just. When I say it's more, yes, we pray and we ask God, but if I'm not sincere in my heart, if I'm not sincere about it, that prayer did nothing for me in accepting Christ. I have to be sincere. Am I going to be perfect? No. I'm going to go through the sanctification process. And what what uh, young Christians don't understand is the closer you get to the light, the more you're able to see that, oh, I still got some work that needs to be done on Bill. <laughs> Amen. I've, I've, I've got some work that needs to be done, but uh, but the, if if I keep, if if I keep pressing, pressing toward that light, and that's what uh, that's what our Lord has, says uh, wants us to do. For everyone that doeth evil again 
hateth the light. So they're going to hate you. The light, the spiritual light. Uh, let me let me give this example. The moon doesn't give off light. We just had a, a uh, eclipse yesterday, right? And there was a total eclipse. You could see it in New Mexico. You couldn't. Uh, we, we had a partial eclipse. I guess it was maybe about three quarters. Uh, I didn't go out and look at it yesterday, but but it is. There's a there was a total. There was an eclipse, and the sun was blocked. <laughs> and sometimes in our lives, what we do is we block the S, not the S U N, but the S O N. Hey man, yeah, yeah, uh, we, we 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 block him because we don't. Uh, when I say we, uh, even Christians can get caught up in sin, and and live a certain way that is not pleasing to God, uh, because they don't want to come to the light. Why? Because the light's going to reprove us. It's going to show us some things in our life that need to be changed. And because of that, uh, they uh, they reject the light. But he that doeth the tr truth. Now, now note, see, G Jesus is contrasting somebody that has truly accepted him. Amen? Am, am I right about that? That's why you got to read it. Not, not just John 3.16. For God so loved the world. Amen. Uh, yeah, he, he loves you. It, it, God does not desire that any would perish. Any, amen, is what is what is what Peter wrote and, and is true. But he he doeth the truth. Amen. Check that out. Truth is a key word in our study today. Truth is a very important word in our study today. Because what, what are they gonna do? They're gonna come to the light. Amen. It's not it's not hard for them to get into the word of God. And I and I say that. Uh, there's some of us who are believers, and again, we'll talk about this that this week because the word of God is important to us, saints, if we're going to grow as Christians. It's, it's, it's that important. And that's why it's good for us to talk about it again, like we did uh last year. But you 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 you'll want to move toward that light, just like a moth wants to move toward the light and, and get closer and closer, so will we. And, and that light is Christ. And, and Jesus said something else in Matthew on that Sermon on the Mount. Remember in that fifth chapter? He said, ye are the light of the world. Now, I just got through talking about the moon. The moon, when, when there, there's a full moon right now, right? But the, that... That light that you see, because it gives off some light during the night, as well as the stars and so forth. But that that light is not coming from the moon. It's coming from the S-U-N. The light in us is not coming from us. It's coming from the S-O-N as he shines in our light because what where Jesus said that men will see your good works and they won't glorify you. Amen. Uh, they, they, they'll glorify God uh, that his deeds may be made manifest. You want to make them known. In other words, that's what manifest is. Uh, you want to make Christ known to the world uh, because they are wrought in God. I'm wrapped up, tied up. I know I'm not what I ought to be, but thank God I'm not what I used to be. Or that's not just a quote. Amen. Those are very true words. Because it's a heart matter, saints. It's a heart matter. And, and I want to go back to postmodernism when I talk about that. See, what people believe is that what's right for you is not right for me. And we're about to go to this eighth chapter. And that is so wrong. That is so wrong, saints. Uh, I told you that uh, a lot of Christians don't believe in absolute truth. Don't believe in absolute truth. And you know what we ought to say when somebody, if somebody says to us, I don't believe in absolute truth. 
then that statement you made to me, is it absolutely true? Because <laughs> if you don't believe in absolute truth, <laughs> hey, that applies to that statement that you just made to me. And that there is truth. And we're going to talk about truth in today's lesson. So let's let's look at chapter eight in John. You know, one of the things that I, I told you there was this person that Audrey and I witnessed to, one of the last things that I said to them, uh, and I'll say it this week when we get into our study on uh, getting into the word of God uh, or, or uh, living by the word of God. One of the best books to read is the gospel of John for a new Christian. we got a lot of stuff going on right now. Do y'all realize we just got through studying Daniel? And some of the stuff that's going on in Israel right now, <laughs> do y'all realize where that was first written? <laughs> amen. You, you go back and you look at verses 21 through 27 in Daniel. Amen. Now, and now it's not everything that's there, but because Daniel has... It it, it 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 covers, and I don't want to get back into Daniel again, but it, it it covers a lot of territory all the way to the second coming of Christ. See, Christ said here in John 3, he said he came not to do what? To condemn the world. That's in his first coming. Guess what? In his second coming, that's not true. He's going to come and he's going to, those, he's going, he's going to condemn. Amen. Yeah. And there's a war that's going to go on. Well, let's let's move out of that. <laughs> Amen. But, but that's why I love the Bible. The Bible is so true. It's so relevant to our lives that, that even tells us what has gone on for centuries. And it's amazing how accurate, well, it is accurate in, 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 in what it says. Even when people uh, say that they don't believe. Uh, but in John 8, leading, uh, leading up to verse 31 through 36, Jesus had been speaking to people and there were people that wanted to follow him. They accepted Christ and it made the Pharisees very angry. And so they took Jesus on. They took him on, didn't they? And they said some harsh things uh, to Jesus uh, because uh they 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 wanted Jesus to know that they were superior to him they were superior to him and 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 they they thought Jesus was flawed they thought he was teaching uh things that were false that it was ridiculous and and so Jesus uh, responds to them and Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him. Notice this, and this is why this is so important, what we're about to study this coming week. If you continue what? In my word. If you continue in my word, I'm glad you're here this morning. It makes no sense for us as believers uh, to stay away from the word of God. And, and I'm going to ask a question the first night of our study on Wednesday. Uh, because people, Christians, often say, I want to grow. I want to grow. Well, where are you? Do you really want to grow? Amen. Because if you want to grow, you're going to, I didn't say it. Our Lord and Savior said, you will continue how? In my word. In my word. Then, and check what else he says. In other words, if you don't continue in my word, you finish it. Then I'm not what? Wait, wait a minute, y'all. Come on, come on. Now y'all, y'all, y'all stumbling and fumbling. I want y'all to say it. Now, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you, I'm not your disciple. I'm not your disciple. Because I don't want to continue in your word. Amen. Jesus said that, Saints. Amen. That's why it's more to it than just walking up here and I'm going to give my hand to the preacher. And it, you got to be sincere. You got to be committed to it. And, 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 and it's not just because I studied the Bible. I'm, I, I, I just have accepted Jesus as my Savior, and I said that I'm going to follow him. Do I stumble? Can I fall? Come here, David. Yeah. 
Come here, Peter. Come here, John, that wrote the book of John. John had to do some growing, y'all. I'll, I'll probably talk to you that, about that on Wednesday night also, all right? <laughs> but but uh, uh, that's, that's part of it. But I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue to follow him. And, and, and then here's a verse that we just abuse. <laughs> we just abuse this verse. We said, and ye shall know what? The truth. And the truth shall make you free. Amen. Now, what is the truth? Remember, Pilate, Pilate asked Jesus that. that that's recorded in, in the Gospel of John also. Uh, and Because Pilate asked him, what is truth? And that's what a lot of us are asking today also. That's why you can, uh, let, let me give this example. And, 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 and going back to absolute truth, on my way today, on my way here this morning, I uh, the police had the sirens just blasting, and they were shooting down the reading road. I know what was going on, but you know what? I was very conscious of is what speed I was traveling. <laughs> Because if that man had stopped me and said, sir, this is a 35 mile an hour speed zone and you were traveling 55, I cannot say to him, that's your truth, but that's not my truth. <laughs> I can travel whatever. There are, there are absolute saints and God's word is absolute. Amen. Amen. It, it, it just is. Why, 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 why do I believe that God's word is absolute? Listen, it was uh, uh, God's word it was uh, was written by over forty people from the Old Testament to the New Testament. You can compare scriptures. In fact, the scripture itself, the scripture itself, there are over twenty four thousand manuscripts. On the word of God. 24,000. You don't have that much on, 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 the, on American history. <laughs> you, uh, another they compare it to the Homer's Iliad. There's over 700 of those. That's 24,000. And you can compare them. And, and, and they are spot on. They are spot on. Uh, the, the, there are 40 different questions that... that uh, experts that have come up with that study this and it may be in the spelling well spelling may have been a little bit different back then than it than, than a word is like like the word favor f a f a v o r maybe f a v o u r you know uh it, that there are things like that and 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 just take the prophecy of jesus our, our lord and savior there there are 60 prophecies in the word of god and, and this is an illustration that I've, I've heard uh, ministers give. Chuck Swindoll was the latest one that I've heard it say this, is that if you took, if, 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 if for just one of those prophecies to come true, it would be equal to taking some silver dollars and putting them and covering the entire state of Texas. And, uh, and, and they're two feet deep. Now, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? I wouldn't mind trying to find that. <laughs> but but anyway, uh, and, and there's one particular coin that you have to find. And 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 just for one of those prophecies to come true. And there's 60 of them that came true that we know that's a fact of history. I'm telling you why I believe the word of God and why I believe that I ought to study the word of God. Yes, we ought, we ought to we ought to be getting ready right now, yeah, saints. All these things that's going on. People dying, and they're going to continue to die. Amen? They, uh, what, what's going on in Israel? What's going on in our world, in our own country? It, it should not be a shock to us. What, what we need to do is we need to get prepared. That's what, that's, that's, that's what Daniel was doing. Amen? Uh, he, 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 was, he was always prepared, and that's what we as believers 
ought to be doing it. Should I be afraid? I told you, I used to be fearful when I was a child of the end of the age. I want to be more and more like John. John said in the Revelation, come, Lord Jesus, even now come. Do you understand that he may come at any moment? It's possible. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, you know, Pastor talked about the temple. See, there, there are people uh, right now that want to rebuild the temple in Israel. Amen. And when you read when you read prophecy, and I, I want to get into that too deep uh, because I can't. Uh, uh, but uh, that effort will will take place. It's some, but we don't have to wait for the temple to be rebuilt again uh, because uh, Jesus has already come and He's coming back again. And, and the good news is He's coming for us. So truth, truth is real. It is abs absolute, saints. Uh, it, it is it is absolute. Uh, and, and truth uh, is our standard. Uh, we can't make up, we can't make up our, uh, our own standard. And, and truth is universal. It applies uh, to all. Uh, and, and that's not going to change. It, it 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 the the truth of God's word is not going to change over over time. Uh, the truth is uh, is eternal. That's what uh, Isaiah forty tells us. That's what uh, Psalm one nineteen and sixty tells us. And it comes back to our word today. That's in our lesson. Truth is free. Do you remember what you felt like when you were saved? That's why I like that song, Take Me Back. And all of us ought to do it. Amen. We ought to remember when we first, when we accepted the Lord. Amen. And, and there may have been a time when there was a great renewal in your life. You ought to remember that because what it does, because you, what, what frees you is not what you say or what you do. The truth will make you free because some of the, some of the things that people say are just, just lies. I mean, you know, <laughs> this, that, that's not Jesus is saying he's the truth. He's the way. He is the life. And 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 as you follow him in the truth, in the truth of God's word, it, uh, there are things that are, that ha happen to this day in my life. And I is nobody but the Lord. Or when I read his word, when I hear his word preached, when I hear his word taught, when I hear his word sung, saying, I hear God's word, and there is a freedom that's in that that I can't receive from anything else that's in this world. Amen. There's nothing like it. Amen. If if I could sell it, I'd be a billionaire because everybody would want some of it. Amen. But it's it, it, it's free to 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 accept him. And and this is the truth that Jesus is talking about. And and and, and you know they they the Pharisees uh they were full of nonsense, right? Because they thought because of their birth and that they were born Jews and that they were uh, Abraham's children. And, and Jesus came back at them hard. He said, uh, you belong to your father. And you know who he said their father was? The devil. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that, 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 that's, that's your fault. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because if, 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 if you, if you were my father's children, you would see that I am that light and that I've come to seek and to save those which are lost. I, and, 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 I, and, and when I say that, I want to back up to the first part of the eighth chapter. And that's why it's good to read the whole chapter when you study God's word. Remember what happened? The Pharisees brought to him an adulteress, a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And 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 it was, and, and, and Jesus, he was the only one that was qualified to throw a stone. Amen. Because why? Why do I say that? Amen. Because he, he said to them, they, he that is without sin, let him. And But when he talked to that woman, whoo, listen, 
when he talked to me one day. <laughs> and he let me know that I love you. And in spite of all of your faults, you trust me. You accept me as savior today. There may be somebody that's listening today that have they, they, they've just gone through the routine. They attend church, but the church is not in them. Amen. Uh, they, they're they much like the Pharisees. They've got, they're, they're guided by ritual. Uh, they they, they want to do their own thing. They want to create their own righteousness. And the only righteousness that I'm talking about, that, they, that it can only come from Christ, the kind of righteousness that I'm talking about, because it's his grace and mercy that has, has saved us. So truth is factual, saints. There's evidence. There's evidence uh, to this truth. Uh, and uh, I, I pray that whoever's listening today, if they're not saved, and, and those of us who are, let's get in his word. Get into his word. Our, our, uh, finally, the, the things that, to, because we ought to apply a lesson. We're not just here to, to spend uh, 45 minutes or however long that we're in here, but we ought to identify, acknowledge any doubts you may have about the truth of the gospel of Christ. A lot of people feel uncertain about the objective truth of the gospel. And, and, and let me say this before I leave. See, there's a difference between objective truth and subjective truth. And what we have bought into in this world today is subjective truth. And that goes back. It, it's, so if the subject, if me the subject, if I believe it's true, then it's true. But if it's not, if 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 it's if if uh, if it's not true to me, then it's not it's not truth. The fact is, there objective truth. And what is the object of our truth? The object of our truth is the Word of God. The object of our truth is our Heavenly Father. The object of our truth is 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 our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And because He said He is the truth. And so, whatever I say and wh what I do. Lord, help me to line up with your truth, not my truth. So we ought to seek it. We ought to seek his truth. And then we ought to help others in their doubts uh, so that they can grow in the truth of God. Amen. Uh, Christ wants to set us free, saints. Uh, he wants to set us free. And uh, uh, because what sins are, you know, they, they, they said that that we were never slaves. And I, man, they forgot their history, didn't they? <laughs> because they were slaves. They were not only slaves to the Egyptians, they were slaves to the Babylonians, they were slaves to the Assyrians. And at that time, they were in Rome. Uh, they, that that part, part of Palestine was Rome, Rome ruled. Amen. And, and, and so uh, but with the, the slavery that Jesus is talking about, it's the slavery of sin. Don't you know that if you are in sin, you are in bondage? Amen. And he wants to set you free. And that's what the Savior can and will do. Come back next week and let's talk about are miracles relevant? Are mil miracles relevant? Miracles are the acts of God that point to Jesus and glorify him. We're going to be looking at the 10th chapter of John and the 14th chapter of John next week. God bless you. And uh, saints, uh, I, I pray that something was said that would help you on your journey with the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, oh, how we rejoice in you and thankful for your work. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Heavenly Father. Thank you, that, thank you, Lord, that you died on the cross for our sins. And Father, I know it's not enough for us to say that uh, ourselves and it, it's more than about me and it's about others so help us as a church family lord as believers as christians whoever's on this call to reach out to others who may be lost we're in the last days dear god there's no question about it been in the last days uh, and and lord there are people that are hungry they need your help and you can free them and help us lord to spread your gospel so that men, women, boys, and girls might be free. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
morning, family. Good morning. It's good to be in the house of God once again. Amen. To come and worship Him together as a family. It's good to be here. Just lift up the name of Jesus because He is worthy of praise. He is worthy of all the honor Amen. and the glory. Yes. So right now we're going to ask that everyone will join in, stand in with me. And turn to page 40 if you need the words of the songs. It's found in the red praise book. He is our king. How many of you know that today? I know that he is our king. I couldn't make it without him. And I thank him for the peace and the comfort and the joy. And, and, and how he encouraged me and gives me the strength that I need as we go through the things that we have to go through on this journey. We just praise him for who he is. Because he is a mighty God and he is worthy of praise. Amen. He is worthy of our praise. Thank you, Lord. Yes, I do. Page 40.
Let's pray together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, this is your house. Yes. And your house is the house of prayer, dear God. Yes, Lord. And oh, how we need to just talk to you, yes. Heavenly Father. Not just because we're before men, women, boys, and yes. girls, Heavenly Father. Yes. But Heavenly Father, we need to talk to you because we need you every hour. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. We need to talk to you, Heavenly Father, because we know that there's no one like you and that you love us, dear God. And that's the words to that song are true because they're in your word, Heavenly Father. You told us to cast our cares on you, Lord. Because you care for us. You love us, Heavenly Father. And Father, we need wisdom. Yes, Lord. We need strength. We need guidance, Heavenly yes. Father. Yes. Because, Lord, it's not about my will. Yes. It's about yours, dear yes. Lord. And I want to represent yes. you, Heavenly Father. Yes. Forgive me, Lord, where yes. I have sinned. Yes. Forgive me, yes. Heavenly Father, if, if I have yes. any ought against my brother. And if, yes. and if I do, Heavenly Father, touch my heart, Lord, so I would go to yes. them, dear yes. God. Yes. Yes. Like your word says, Heavenly Father. Yes. And, 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 and Heavenly Father, that we that we might have agreement, that we might have unity, Lord. Because yes. I know that's what your desire is. Yes, Except Satan would have us divided. Yes. Would have us, yes. Heavenly Father, at one another's throat, dear God. Yes. But that's not your way. No. So Lord, we want to follow your way and yes. your will, yes. Lord. Yes. Father, we are grateful, Heavenly Father, uh, uh, how you have blessed us this past week. Yes. Heavenly Father, but there are a lot of troubling things that are going on in our world. Yes. You said in your world to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. And there's no peace there right now. And Heavenly Father, it's terrible, dear God. Yes. And in Palestine, I pray for them, dear God. Yes. There are people that, uh, that are still suffering from the loss of loved ones, dear yes. God. Yes. There are those that are sick with illness, yes. Heavenly Father. Yes. And we lift them up to you, dear yes. God, and ask yes. for your healing power, dear God. Yes. And Father, we're here today uh, not just to ask, but to praise you, dear yes. God. And we want to be careful to praise you with everything that we have within us, dear God. Because you're worthy of the praise and honor. And we know, Lord, that, that you're with us. And that there's nothing that can happen to us in this world, dear God, that, that, that you didn't see. Because you are the God that sees before him and Father, we even get there. And you bless and you take care of us because you said you would be with us always. Yes. So, Father, we worship you now. Yes. And we look forward to giving you the praise. And, Father, we need your word. Yes. We're hungry, dear God. Yes. I'm going to look to my left, to my right, yes. not in front of me or behind me. But, Lord, help me to look from within yes. because there's healing power that's in your word. Yes. We pray this in Jesus' name and his will be done. Amen. 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 Saints, I, I encourage you to turning your Bibles to that song that will bless us. Amen. 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 Five verses. Verses one through five. <clears throat> Psalm 30. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cry unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Oh, thank you, Lord. O oh, Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, all ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Together, let's read this fifth verse. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy coming in the morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Is there anybody else who don't know like you know? Hello, somebody. Well, we're going to worship God in our giving, and there's some folk that's going to give because they know. Hello, somebody. They know that God is good all the time and that all the time God is good. Amen. Even doing the offering. Hey, oh, yeah. you don't know. Hello, somebody. Like I know. Yeah. Amen and praise the Lord. It's time for our offering. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I said it's time for our offering. Praise the Lord. Our giving determines what? Amen. Amen. Let's worship him in our giving. Because you don't know. Hello, somebody. Like I know. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, choir, for leading us in Zion song. Amen. Amen. Before we get into the word today, uh, we're going to ask you to continue to pray and to fast and pray. Yes, as I Lord. send out the pastor's uh, text, we have names on there, and we need you to intercede on their behalf. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen and praise the Lord. And we are praying for peace mm -hmm. in the Middle East, mm -hmm. Israel, yes. Jerusalem. All right. Amen. 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 Amen and praise the Lord. So Jesus said that my house shall be called a house of what? Prayer. Prayer. So Amen. we always try to keep prayer at the forefront. If you need to be added on the prayer list, then let me know. Amen. 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 Also this afternoon at, I believe it is, I can't see the time print. Oh, at uh, 3 o'clock, mm -hmm. we're going to have chicks. South District Man's Annual Musical. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. We look to see you there. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be at Mount Carmel there in Winniewood, Oklahoma. Right. And we're excited about Oklahoma Baptist State Convention. And I need you to pray for traveling mercy and traveling grace. And uh, we are excited about. Not that we are not going to have no Zoom Bible study, but we are excited about uh, our loyalty month study. I call it our loyalty revival. Amen. 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 I'm so excited about this, and I see so we see how God worked uh, last time we did this, and we're just excited to be in prayer for our instructors uh, this coming Wednesday. 
And we are starting at what time? 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Amen. So we are excited about that. Tell your family members and your friends. You know how to do it. We've done it before. And uh, but meet us there. Amen. 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 And praise the Lord. And we will have our annual revival on October the 23rd through the 20th. Uh, fifth as well and we're excited about that as well so we want you to govern yourselves accordingly in Jesus name amen amen amen, amen. I'm continuing <laughs> in the series this month entitled the B series the B series mm -hmm. as we are standing on Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 be strong and courageous mm -hmm. do not be afraid mm -hmm. We are living in the end times, but be strong and courageous, mm -hmm. and do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you everywhere you yeah. go. Everywhere. And we want to encourage you to be, we use the illustration of, of Shakespeare's play Hamlet, mm -hmm. where he was trying to determine whether he was going to be or not to be. Mm -hmm. We want to encourage you that regardless of many of the trials that you're going through and how the devil tries to discourage you at times, right. we want you decide to decide to be. Hello, son. Right. Amen. To be. Yes. We want you to decide to be mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Yes. We Amen. had several messages in the series. We talked about to be fearless. We wanted you to be faithful. We want you to be fierce. Today we're going to uh, be looking at a message, be courageous, be courageous and formidable and forceful in these day and times. But today we're going to look at a message, be ferocious, be ferocious, uh, ferocious, I'm sorry, be ferocious. What did I say? <laughs> Stand, please. Uh, Judges chapter 8, verses Four through five. Let's read this out loud together at the same time on three. One, two, three. Gideon and his 300 men, exhausted yet keeping up the pursuit, came to the Jordan and crossed it. He said to the men of Succoth, Give my troops some bread. They are worn out, and I am still pursuing Zeba and Zalmunna. The kings of me. Amen. You may be seated in the household of the Lord. You may be seated in the household of the Lord. Today we're going to share on around three points. The Holy Spirit gives us uh, el uh, utterance. Uh, we're going to talk about a limited people, a limited power, and a limited uh, provision. We want Christians to know today what? Christians should be what? Ferocious, Ferocious in... Their service to God. Mm -hmm. Christians should be ferocious in their service to God. Let's look at this brief video, and then we'll get into the Word. Early in the morning, Jerubbaal, that is Gideon, and all his men camped at the spring of Herod. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hill of Mora. The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men for me to deliver Midian into their hands. In order that Israel may not boast against me that her own strength has saved her, announce now to the people, Anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left, while 10,000 remained. But the Lord said to Gideon, There are still too many men. Take them down to the water, and I will sift them for you there. If I say, This one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say, This one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water, there the Lord told him, Separate those who lap the water with their tongues like a dog from those who kneel down to drink. Three hundred men lapped with their hands to their mouths. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. 
The Lord said to Gideon, With the three hundred men that left, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the other men go, each to his own place. So Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites to their tents, but kept the three hundred, who took over the provisions and trumpets of the others. Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at this on the map before we get into the word today. Uh, Gideon and this battle is well known, um, but many times we have never taken a look at it on the map. But as always, I like to kind of give you uh, the context of where Jerusalem is and the reason why it's not on the map. Usually it's because Jerusalem was not uh, in existence at that time, but Jerusalem is somewhere right here. Israel <coughs> up in here and you've been hearing about the West Bank which is somewhere up in here and the Gaza Strip is down here uh, connected uh, to Egypt and uh, they're backed that's why Hamas is uh, they say they are trapped back the back right here to the Mediterranean Sea and of course Israel, and that's where the battle is about to happen, and that's why we, we always really pray for peace mm. in the Middle East. And Hamas, and Hamas is, uh, was once uh, considered Palestine, and uh, you could trace uh, many of these battles uh, between, they say, Ish, uh, Isaac and Ishmael. Ishmael, from Ishmael came the Arabs and uh, Isaac, uh, of course, uh, the Jews, uh, and uh, so it's always been a battle, always been a battle in that day and time. But this battle is kind of unique because it's closer up here to Galilee, and this is where the men who were left over, the 300, lapped, and this is where they would fight the battle on the hill of Moriah. And uh, we're looking after the battle there where they uh, just routed them mm -hmm. and uh, there was uh, 15,000, I'll get into the numbers a little later, but there were some men who ran from that battle that they had and we are right now in the pursuit at the latter end of uh, the battle uh, which uh, started here and they began to retreat and ran back over up in this area. So they began to retreat. And that's the word on the maps. Mm. But as they were winning the battle mm -hmm. uh, and had a great, great victory, there was a part of the battle or the people um who were running away, running away. And you can see the numbers here that they were pursuing 15,000 folk who got away from the battle where I just showed you because uh, 120,000 uh, Midianites died on the battlefield that day. Mm -hmm. um, they had a... Uh, uh, they were, they had over 135,000, and you can do the numbers in Judges chapter 8 and 10. And uh, we see that God used 300 people All right. um, to take out 135,000 folks. about the numbers. Um, and, and we quote this, but many times we don't realize it, that if God is for you, All right. uh, then who can be against you? And God is not into uh, the attendance numbers. Because many a times those in attendance may not believe what they are, are attending for. Hello, somebody. 
Because there may be somebody as choir led us that you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. There may be somebody in the crowd that don't know. Hello, somebody. And it's the truth like you know because, oh, they don't know the God that you serve. And many times we, we look at the numbers. And we think that there's more God in the numbers and God says different. Mm. Um, Gideon had a pretty nice little crowd, a pretty nice little mega church of 32,000 folk uh, who were willing to go into battle. And with 32,000, they still was outnumbered uh, by 135,000. But God said, oh, there's too many folk in this army and because there are too many folk in this army, if you win, you will think that it was just all you. Hello, somebody. Uh, you won't know, like the choir said this morning, like, like, like I know what the Lord has done for me. You see, if, if it would have took 32,000, they would have thought that it was them doing it. Hello, yeah, somebody. Yeah, yeah. And God said, you got too many folk. Uh, oh, Brother Gideon, I need you. In order for me to move, I need you to subtract. Hello, somebody. Yep. Yep. Sometimes in order for God to add, he has to subtract. Sometimes in order for God to add, he has to divide. And, and we don't understand those divine numbers. Oh, so God told him, hey, cut him, cut him out. Hello, somebody had 10,000 left. Still was too many. And who would have ever thought that God would have took 300 people for his glory to go up against an army of 135 folk? Oh, 135,000 folk. Oh, but God said, I want to I want to do this to, to be done for my glory. So what he did is he limited the people. Hello, somebody. Right, right. Hey, hey, hello, hello, hello. This is what God does. We can never really be into the numbers because we don't really know what the numbers are. Hello, somebody. Right, right. And here's the, the attraction. This is what it said. Now, now, to the army, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back. Oh, and leave my word. Yeah. Hello, somebody. If you're afraid. I don't want you in this army. Right. If you are afraid, and guess what? Uh, these brothers told the truth. Hello, somebody. <laughs> and 20, what? 22,000 men left. Hello, somebody. And there was only 10,000 left. Hello, somebody. They were afraid. God did not give you the spirit of fear. Fear is a, a, a illustration or example of unbelief. Right. And that's why the Bible says, uh, I believe 135 times to fear not in the book in the word of God to uh, three, three uh, hundred and, and sixty-five times to fear not in the Bible. Because fear is a sign of lack of faith. Right. And God can't use folk who are afraid because it's a sign of lack of faith. And God is saying this morning, have fear not in these times. I know it seems like your world is falling apart, but fear not. I know there's battles and wars in the Middle East, but fear not. I know what's going on over there in Russia and Ukraine. Fear not. I know what they're doing over there in Korea. Fear not in China, but for the Christian. Oh, fear not. They said that these are the last days. And for me, that does, that's not a reason for me to fear. That's a reason for me to be excited. Because I know that Jesus is coming again. I know that the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will rise first. And those of us who remain alive will be caught up in an instant in a twinkling of an eye. Fear not Bethlehem in Jesus. These men were afraid and admitted and God could use folk who are afraid. Amen. God can use folk who are afraid. And this morning, God says, I know what's going on. But you, Bethlehem, fear not. I am in control. Hello, yes, sir. I'm in control. Right. 
Amen. Okay, now we got 10,000. Okay, well, Lord, okay, we still outnumbered. Now we're ready to go. Now we're ready to fight. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> Judges 7 and, and 7 says, And the Lord said to Gideon, With these 300 that left, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands and let all the others go home. Let them folks go home. Right. Many times, oh, we come to church, and the talk of the day is, who's not here? Hello, somebody. Many times, when we come to church, we're looking for folks to be there. But God says, if they decide not to be, if they decide that they are afraid, let them go back. Hello, somebody. It's time for you to let some folks go back who's afraid in your life. Let some folks go back. Who don't understand uh, the theology of God. Uh, and the theology of God is uh, wherever two or three are gathered together. And he is in the midst. Uh, oh, that's the theology of God. The theology of God is uh, if God is for us, uh, who can stand against us? Uh, I know you're facing some uncertain times. Uh, but don't you know who your God is? Uh, fear not. Who believe that God is dead at Bethlehem because uh, unbelieving folk decided to not come here. Woo! My Lord. Hello, somebody. 22,000 unbelieving folk. That's a whole mega church that folk brag about of having today churches of uh, 22,000. Hello, somebody. But when COVID hit, uh, what happened to those churches of 22,000? They were closed down like every other small church. Because more people don't need more power. Woo! All right. Hello, somebody. It is God that we serve. And we've got to know who he is. And he is not into the people. He's into people who believe that he is God. That he's the creator of heaven and earth. Those are the people he loves. Those are the people he wants to come to church. Those are the people he wants to worship him. Because they can sing and believe for real that you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. In Jesus' name. Oh, yeah, they was limited in people, but they were not limited in God. Right, right. Ooh, let me say that again. They were limited in people, but they were not limited in God. Right. Amen. And they had the victory. Mm -hmm. Woo! Before they even got to the battle. Yes. Right. Somebody's here. God says uh, that you have the victory right now because you believe uh, even before you get into the battle. Uh, you have the victory right here and right now. Oh, you have limited folk, but guess what? You don't have a limited God. That's right. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Hello, somebody. I'm so glad. Yeah. Hello, somebody. And I don't have to go out uh, oh, to Dallas to a mega church to experience who God is. Uh, I'm so glad. Uh, I don't have to live uh, in a million, eight million uh, people city to experience the power of God. Uh, oh, I'm so glad. Uh, oh, that God is real right here in Bethlehem Baptist yeah. Church. Uh, in Paul's Valley, yeah. Oklahoma, in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. They were a limited, uh, limited in people. Hello, yes, sir. Uh -huh. And they also were what? Limited, limited in power. power. Mm -hmm. Woo! Because again, they had exhausted this 300 of them, and now they're pursuing 15,000. And, 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 and the 300 men they had to pursue to get the complete victory. God says, Oh, I want you to have a complete victory, and you can't let anybody or anything all oh, survive that's not supposed to survive in your life. You've got to go out. And you've got to work the work uh, of him that sent you while this day for the night coming when no man can work. Uh, and sometimes uh, your work will cause you to be what? Exhausted. Hello, somebody. They were exhausted. 
tell them something. Is there anybody here today who's exhausted? Oh, because after all, exhausted, when you're exhausted, that means you need to quit. When you're exhausted, that means you need to throw in the time. When you're exhausted, oh, that means God is not giving you the victory that's alive from the pit of hell. Hello, somebody. In this life, sometimes you will be exhausted from the work that God has called you to do. Oh, if you're doing it right, at times you will be exhausted. Oh, don't you know to defeat camps? Oh, you're going to be exhausted. Sometimes, but it doesn't mean that you don't have the victory over cancer. Oh, that means that you've got to keep pursuing in Jesus. Keep pursuing all the treatment. Keep pursuing and taking the medicine. Keep pursuing and fasting and praying. You've got to keep pursuing. Oh, yes, you're exhausted. Oh, yes, you lost loved ones. Oh, yes, you're sick in your body. Oh yes, the medicine gives you all side effects. You're exhausted, but God says, even though you're exhausted, I've given you the complete victory, and you can't give up in the fight. You've got to continue all to pursue. Yes, exhausted. Oh, somebody here today, you're here and you're exhausted, and you are thinking about throwing in the towel. Because you've been through so many battles. But God says, don't throw in the towel. You better learn to pursue exhaustion in Jesus' name. Oh, yes. They were what? Keeping up the pursuit. You better keep up the pursuit. Oh, the victory's not complete yet. Keep up the pursuit. And do it. Exhaustion. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I said, do it exhausted. God knows your time. Right. But you better do it exhausted. Because he says he has given you the victory. He says, oh, that this battle, oh, he's going to give it to you. But guess what? You're going to have to play your part. Play your role. Oh, there's somebody who's been unemployed and been seeking a job and can't see, can't seem to find a job. And you're exhausted searching. God says you better keep pursuing. Don't give up. In Jesus' name, you have the victory, but you're going to have to work for this victory. You're going to have to pursue it. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Praise God, all the folk want God to just give it to them at, uh, at their bedside. Lord Hello, ever. somebody. Yeah, all right. Hello, somebody. Mm. Thinking God's going to give it to you at your bedside. I, I, I want God's healing, and he said you can have it, but you don't want to take the treatments to get it. Mm. Woo! Mm. Woo! Mm. Hello, somebody. Mm. Hello, somebody. You don't want to be exhausted. Mm. What to survive, God said. You're going to have to do it exhausted and continue to pursue in Jesus' name. All right. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Because God's work is not easy. I don't know where we get that from. That's right. God's work is not easy. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Hello, somebody. It's it's not easy to prepare for what we're going to go into on Wednesday. It takes several hours uh, of study, several hours uh, of prayer. Oh, I know it's in the middle of the week. Oh, I know you have jobs to go to, but you better come here oh, on Wednesday. If you have to, you better do it exhausted. You better show up. Oh, because God says uh, he's giving you the victory, but you got to show up. And if you got to do it exhausted, you better do it exhausted. Show up. I got something for you. Show up and do the work. Do the study. Show up in Jesus' name. Do it exhausted. Yeah. Amen. In Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. In Jesus' name. And the Bible says this. And we know this, but we don't like to live it. It says that we are hard pressed uh, on every side. Uh, oh, Christians today don't like being hard pressed uh, on every side. Uh, we think that God is supposed to oh, allow nothing to press us. Uh, uh, we think that God should uh, 
And we believe that prosperity teaches. Oh, when they tell you, oh, send me this money, and God is going to open the windows of heaven. Oh, and pour out blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. And they tell you that God is going to keep stuff away from you. Oh, but this text there, there's going to be some stuff pressing you, not on one side, but every side. But God says you have the victory because you're not crushed. Oh, somebody's been oh, pressed on every side. And you think that God has forgotten you. You think that somehow... Oh, the God is not real. Oh, God says I'm real. The very reason, oh, that you're not crushed is because I'm with you. But the devil is pressing on every side. Oh, there are times in our lives that we will be perplexed. I'm perplexed now about some stuff going on in my life. I can't understand it. But guess what God says? Oh, even though you can't understand why you got it. Even though you can't understand why you got laid off. Oh, after all, you were tired in every son. Oh, you don't understand why you got to go through the surgery. Why God just won't heal you miraculously. Oh, you're perplexed and can't understand. You don't understand why you got to go through a divorce. You were faithful. Oh, and you're perplexed. And somehow want to think that somehow that God has forgotten you. God says that we can be perplexed, but not in despair. Oh, I'm perplexed about some stuff. But guess what? I haven't given up. I haven't thrown in the towel. I've been exhausted. Oh, but yet I see a pursue in Jesus' name. Persecuted. Oh, if you serve the Lord, you will be persecuted. Oh, but guess what? You will not be abandoned in Jesus' name. I said you won't be abandoned in Jesus' name. Oh, and guess what? Struck down. Hello, somebody. Struck down. Somebody struck down last night. Somebody got struck down last week. Oh, but the psalmist said, we fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. Oh, and God says, the reason you can get up, because you're not destroyed. Oh, and the only reason, oh, that you don't have to give up is because God is there in the midst of the fight, in the midst of the battle. This was a battle. Oh, they were exhausted. They had a limited people. Oh, they had limited power, but they continue to pursue in Jesus' name. And God said to the Bethlehem Baptist Church, continue to pursue the things of God in Jesus' name. Continue to pursue revival. We think in order to have revival, the place has to be full. But all we need is 12 folk to get sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And we can turn the world upside down in Jesus' name. Hello, disciples! All right, amen. Limited in number, but not limited in God. Yes, yes Lord. Hello, son. Limited in power, but not limited in God's power. Right. Yes, Lord. And last, least I keep us too long. God wants you to be what? Who? He wants you to be what? Ferocious. Ferocious. He wants you to not give up. He wants you to continue in the battle. Continue in the fight. I know you've lost some loved ones. I know all oh, that you've been sick in your body. But God says that you have the victory. I know you're living in the end times and in the end days. Oh, but don't you give up in Jesus' name. Amen. And not only that, they were limited in provision. Woo wee! They were limited in provision. This is what Gideon. Gideon was trying to uh, raise an offering to feed his troops. Yeah, he was. And he went and said, "Give my troops some bread." Right. For they are worn out. Right. 
give my troops some bread, for they are worn out. And usually, worn out folk, you can't get them off the bed. Worn out folk, you can't get them to pursue anything. Worn out folk, oh, who had to miss a meal? Hello, fasting and praying. I call this fast a force fast. Hell, so what? Has anybody ever been in a forced fast in their life? Hmm. I can remember a few brief moments in the time of my life mm -hmm. where I ate and I did not know where my next meal was coming from. Yeah. Hello, somebody. I, I can remember a time in my life and in my family's life I had somebody in my family during that time saying, Guys! Well, resources will appear to be limited. Yes, or oh, where well, the provisions will appear all oh, to be limited. But guess what? Again, though you may have a limited people, though you may have a limited power, though it may seem like you got a limited provision, guess what? Oh, that's not a limited God. Yeah. Your God is not limited by your circumstances. Right, and these troops who were exhausted, these troops who were worn out, continued to pursue and got the victory, the complete victory, even though they was hungry, even though they was tired, even though, oh, it didn't appear, oh, that they had the complete victory. God says, don't focus on the circumstance. Don't focus on the people. Oh. Jehovah Shireh, our God who will provide for our every need. 
praise in Jesus' name. Oh, forget about the people. Forget about your own power. Forget about the provisions that seems lacking. And focus on the God that you serve. Because, oh, you're still here. Oh, you weren't afraid. Oh, scary folk quit. Scary folk turn back. But you're still here. And you believe by faith. And you can have the victory because you have faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Oh, it's evidence. I don't see it. But I got evidence. Oh, that evidence is the word of God. Oh, my God will supply. All of my needs. All of my needs. According to his riches. Yes, yes, Lord. And glory. Thank you, Lord. And Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen and praise the Lord. I'm out of time. All eyes closed, heads about saints of God. This morning. You may be here and you may not know about the God that we showed you that can work irregardless of a limited people. Yes, sir. He can work even in your limited power. Yes, Lord. He can work in, in, even in regards to your limited provision. Mm -hmm. You may not know him. Mm -hmm. The Bible says one of my favorite texts, and you'll hear me say it very often. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave right. his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. And if you're here today, you don't have a God. Um, you don't ever remember this absolute truth. Jesus said that I am the way. That's a definite article in that Jesus Christ was God's only son. Then he died for your sins and was buried and raised again on the third day. Then today you can be saved. Slip out of your seat right now and come forth and say that I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Is there one today? And we ain't going to tarry long because I'm out of time. But if God is moving, we'll take time. That's right. Amen. We'll make time. Right. So come forth. Is there one today who want to get right with God, to give their life to Jesus Christ, who understand this absolute truth that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life? No one cometh to God but by him. Is there one today? Days like today, we know that most people here are saved. We always like to pause. Take a moment just in case. Also, we want to remind you that you can after the service and come forward and we can have this conversation privately like Nicodemus had. Yes. Yeah. Private conversation. <laughs> If you'd like to come, come to me after the service. Amen. Would everyone please stand as I give the benediction? What, it, what is it that God wants you to be, church? Ferocious. He wants you to be ferocious about the things of God. Everything that he told you, you need to live it out. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. We need you to be ferocious next week as we begin this Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. You may be tired. You may have just gotten off of work. But you need to come. And you need to pursue. All right. Even though you may be exhausted. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Tell family members and friends to join you. Bring somebody. As we are excited about what God is about to do, starting this Wednesday night. Yes, Lord. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name yes. for the absolute truth 
truth of who you are mm -hmm. in the lives of us who believe. And we thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, that we don't have to look to the people. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to look to our own power. We thank you, Lord, That's that right. we don't have to look to our own provision. We focus on you, yeah. and we have the victory. Mm -hmm. Put your head of protection around us. Keep us safe from our harm and danger. Yes, Lord. Until we meet again, and the people of God said, Ferocious. Ferocious in Jesus' name. You are dismissed.